So emotional eating is at the tip of the iceberg. It's so much more than just about food and your body. So let's dive in. So if you're new here, welcome. My name is Michelle. I'm a certified holistic nutritionist specializing in emotional eating. And today I wanted to dive a little bit deeper. When we emotionally eat at the surface, at the tip of the iceberg, what we see is our out of control behavior with food, our obsessive thoughts about food and our body, and just feeling out of control. But it's so much more than this. And just like an iceberg, this is just the tip. There's so much more going on under the surface. And so emotional eating has all of these layers because it is a coping mechanism and it would have began when you were in childhood. So when I'm working with clients and we finally get to the root of their pattern, it's always coming from childhood because a coping mechanism is created so that whatever discomfort, distress, uncomfortable emotions are coming up, we weren't taught how to be with them. Our parents or caregivers weren't able to help us navigate through um, our uncomfortable emotions or provide the safety and the calmness so that we felt we felt we were able to express what was going on for us. And so we were left holding on to these uncomfortable emotions and they don't feel good in our body and we needed a way to get out of this. And so food is really great at giving us a dopamine rush. It distracts us, it numbs us, and it becomes the way we cope and soothe ourselves whenever we get triggered or, or these situations happen. Along the way, it impacts our relationship to food our body and our emotions in an unhealthy way. So those relationships, they're no longer healthy. And so we have to start looking beyond just our behavior with food and our body and start looking at the real reasons why we created this coping mechanism. And it's really all of these layers we have to look at and we need to look at our relationship to food, our body and our emotions, but go deeper than just our behaviors around them or our actions around them. So you might notice with food, you restrict or you count calories or, you know, you kind of punish yourself around food. Um, and then with your body, you are, you know, not listening to maybe the cues of your body, the energy levels, you're pushing yourself past your limit at the gym or overexerting yourself or trying to fit into a box that you think you should be in. And with your emotions, you use food to soothe or you bypass them or you think you shouldn't have them. And this just spirals you back into your emotional eating pattern. And so there are different layers that are happening here. We need to look at all of these layers, not just how are we being with them and the action steps, but how do we think about food and our body and our emotions that's limiting us from actually feeling good? So when we have this coping mechanism, we're usually creating limits around how we interact with food because we feel so out of control with it. So we do try to restrict and control calories, control macros. We restrict around our body because we think if we look a certain way, we fit into that box, we'll finally get the love and acceptance we're craving. And that's part of the reason we restrict around food. And then with our emotions, we sort of bypass them. We don't know how to deal with them. Obviously, we use food to cope with them. And we might be telling ourselves something's wrong with us for even having these emotions. And so here, all of these ways we're looking at food, our body, and our emotions, make ourselves be normal around them, act normal around them, is creating a lot of shame. And this shame just triggers emotional eating more and more. So if we go back to that iceberg, under the surface of the iceberg of your emotional eating coping mechanism, your, your habits around your emotional eating, is the sense of low self-worth, low self-esteem, not having a healthy relationship to food, your body, feeling body shame and low confidence. And all of these things are going on under the surface and they're driving the pattern forward. It's really this shame, this discomfort, uncomfortable emotions in these areas that's driving the pattern. And so how do we start chipping away at that root, at that deeper level that is under the surface of this iceberg. So that's like 90%. And this is sort of where you could say all these patterns, all these limitations are. And so when I'm working with clients, we need to clear out this area in order to resolve the emotional eating, what we're seeing, the symptom at the top. So how do we do this? We have to start 
creating a relationship to food, our body, and our emotions that's healthy. And that just doesn't mean eating in a better way or moving in a better way or thinking a better thoughts about our emotions. There's deeper work to be done. We have to shift those limiting beliefs. We have to create a new way forward. And so with food that looks like on a, on a level, learning to interact with food in a healthy way. So taking those actions so that we're nourishing our body, we're able to tell when we're truly hungry, we're satisfying our hunger, and we can see when our emotional eating is popping up. And then seeing where we're blocked, where are we limiting ourselves? Where do we have limitations around nourishing our body? Why are we restricting calories and opening ourselves up to a new way that's in touch with our body and our true needs around food? And then with our body, we're looking at the shame we feel around our body. Why are we not honoring our body's rhythms and understanding the needs of the body? Because when we shame our body or we don't get enough rest or movement or whatever it is our body needs and we shame our body because it doesn't fit into this box, we have to look at that and start shifting. How are we judging ourselves, shaming ourselves and start shifting that because those are triggers to our emotional eating. And then, of course, around our emotions, we have to now understand that emotions are important and shift from bypassing them and using food to actually starting to process and integrate them at a body level, getting to those unresolved emotions, those unresolved events in our past, those traumas that are actually running the emotional eating pattern. When we're able to do that, we shift out of feeling shame around our emotions and we can start meeting our true emotional needs. And so in each of these areas, we're meeting our true needs physically with food, um, you know, physically with our body and physically with our emotions as well, because they're all found in the body. They're all interacting with the body. We're trying to meet all of our needs because when our needs are not met and we have all of these uncomfortable emotions coming up, that drives us to emotionally eat. Here, we need to connect back to food, we need to connect back to our body, and we need to connect back to our emotions so that we can actually meet our needs to move forward and to resolve this pattern. And so when I'm working with clients, this is what we're doing. We're shifting because it's connected to you, it's authentic to you. It's not about willpowering. It's not about thinking you have to be something that you're not looking at this external box. It's about meeting your true needs. And when you meet your true needs, there's an exhale in the box body and food cannot fill that void. It cannot fill that hole of meeting your true needs. Only doing these steps can. So noticing when you need nourishment, noticing when your body needs movement or needs something else and noticing and being able to move through your emotions and model that to yourself, something you didn't have um, growing up, which you needed developmentally. When you do this, you shift your pattern and your nervous system from fight or flight to rest and digest, from emotionally eating to feeling at ease and confident around food and in your body. And so the best way to get started on this journey of really resolving your emotional eating, getting into these deeper layers under the surface, is to start to learn to discern true from emotional hunger and catching your triggers. And so I have a free guide called What Are You Truly Hungry For? that you can get started on this. And this is the first step I give to my clients when they are actively working on resolving their emotional eating. So you can find the link below. If you are ready to resolve your emotional eating and you want more support, you want the step-by-step process and the in-depth tools, you can find out more about my 12-week program, the Emotional Eating Evolution Program. In this program, you are given the steps and the support to transform your pattern from emotionally eating to feeling at ease and confident around food and in your body and in your life. So if you'd like to find out more about that, you can find out more below. I just want to say thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about what I've shared today, please let me know. Please be sure to like and subscribe, and I look forward to sharing more with you, and I hope you have a great day.